Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. Instead of being outside today, I thought I'd come indoors. This is the studio that I work in. It's a little bit more professional, a little bit more classy. You know, I put on a put on a whistle today so I can I can look a little bit better because today we are here to look at the Zap wallet from Slim Puro. So this is a lovely German company that got in touch with me uh, through Instagram. They watched one of my recent um, wallet pieces of content and asked if I'd like to make some content on their wallet. I thought, yeah, why not? It's a little bit different to the usual style of wallet that I go for. Although, as we'll see when we look through this, it actually has a lot of similarities to some of the wallets that I have been um, making content on recently. So while I'm turning the camera around, if this is your first time to the channel, please feel free to hit that like button. Uh, it means a, a, a huge deal for my channel. Uh, if you're returning to the channel, then hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you can see future video content as it comes live. Now let's get the camera turned around and see what this wallet's all about. Now we don't usually do unboxing style videos, but as this is such a simple package and a simple product, I thought I'd take it out of the box just so that you can see what you get in the box. So the Zap Wallet. Now, there's a bit of a caveat here. I, I don't speak German, or at least I, I, I know how to swear, but that's pretty much about it. Although in one of my videos, you can see that my, I tried a little bit of German. Um, I'm guessing that that's a silent N. It might be Znap, but I'm guessing it's just Zap. So for now, I'm gonna call it Zap. If that's not a silent N and I've just offended all of my German friends, then I do apologize about that. You know I all love you. Um, so the Zap wallet comes in a nice, fairly simple box. Um, open it up, oh, here we go. You have some warranty information in there, tells you a bit about what it is and you know, warranty, RFID uh, properties. Um, it does give you a little information. Now hopefully you'll, you'll see this when you go to purchase one of these, that there are two different versions of it. There's an eight um, card slot version and there's a 12 card slot version. The one that I'm looking at here because I try and keep my um, cards to a minimum, this is the eight card slot version. Um, so you get a little bit of warranty uh, you get some information in here that they'd like you to leave some, leave a nice review on Amazon, which, you know, is kind of expected. Uh, and then the wallet itself comes out. Let's move the box to one side. There's a little sleeve over there that says the, uh, the, the Zap wallet from Slim Puro. And then here you have the wallet itself. Um, the wallet is constructed from aluminium, so it keeps it nice and light, um, and it's it's very tough. You know, it, it's pretty much indestructible. I, I, I love these videos. You see the videos on YouTube where they get somebody and they they like drive a car over it, and they go, "Yeah, look, it's indestructible." Have you ever had a car drive over your toe before? It's not that painful. Um, so the main body or construction of this is made from aluminium. It's all milled from a single piece of aluminium. And then on the front here, you have similar to like a billfold style wallet section that you can keep your cards in. Um, measurements wise, hopefully you'll be able to see actually, I'll, I'll just take a card out, but what you should be able to see is, it's roughly the same size as a credit or a debit card. So it comes in at 60 millimeters by 89 millimeters. So, you know, you've got an extra little bit of width and depth purely because the aluminium's on the side to keep it all together. If you take into account on this side that there's a little snap on there, then it increases by an extra three millimeters to 63 millimeters. It's not that much at all. And then the depth of it comes in at two centimeters or 20 millimeters. So it, it keeps within the, it keeps its credentials as a slim line wallet because it, it just fits within the footprint of a single credit or debit card. And the way that it works is, so if I take all of these out, hopefully you'll be able to see that in there, here's your milled piece of aluminium. 
here are eight cards. Now for me, I usually only carry six, but eight is probably the maximum. Let's say somebody gives me a, a, an Amazon discount card or something like that, then you know there's, there's always room for extra. So that's why I went for the eight here. And they just simply slide in. And it really is as easy as that. So in, in fact, you can put more in at once if you want to. As far as getting cards in and out, is concerned it is very simple you just push forward keep pushing until you find the card that you want and then it's it's here on the back it's it's not difficult whatsoever and I mentioned previously as well that this has some RFID blocking properties so from five sides back these two sides and here um, it's protected against RFID um, signals but because you have this open section here at the front, they wanted to make sure that, you know, if you were buying this purely before its RFID blocking qualities, that they also throw in an RFID shield here at the front as well. So if you need to get your card out, if you keep the cards that you generally use the most here, so let's say I've got a bank card that I always use, I keep it underneath this one so that when I push that one forward, I can take it out, use it, pop it back in, and it's done. And it's super simple for that. Getting your cards in and out isn't difficult. It's not difficult whatsoever. As far as the shake test is concerned, you'll notice unfortunately that the cards do come out if you give it a real good jolt. If there's one thing that I'd change about this is maybe some of the tolerances. I'd, 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 I'm not sure if I've got the right word there, but if they could shave or at least reduce this by a fraction of a millimeter, maybe. I'm sure that they probably put a lot of work into trying to get that so that that's easy to get out, but then doesn't come out when you shake it. Do I ever sit waiting to get served at a bar with my card frantically shaking it like a madman in front of, in front of the bar? No. Do I ever put it in my pocket and think, oh, I'll just give it a little shake before I drop it in? No. So it, it might not be an issue. We kind of make it a thing because we do the shake test when we review these style wallets, but you know, that, that's for you to decide really, isn't it? Comparing, oh, sorry, actually, so, so extra things to point to is, is this whole bit here. So, so on the back, and this is what really separates it from some of the other wallets that I've, I've reviewed in the past. Generally, they are a case or something in which you can store your cards to be able to then get them and, and keep it as small as possible. But what Slimpura have done is, they've done two extra things. The first one is, behind your cards, you have a coin section. So if you have a coin or you have a key or you have something that you need to keep in there, you can put it in there and then it'll push back in and you can get that when needed. On the inside, it does have a uh, like a felt lining so it does stop any coins that you have in there it does stop them from shaking around when it's in your pocket I, again you don't really sit shaking your throttling your wallet whilst you know you're in a queue for anything maybe if you were running it would bounce about a little bit but from my testing I've not found that the coins that I keep in there are, are frustrating but the other bit was this bit on the front here. So what they've done is they've been able to take um, a traditional style billfold and be able to put this onto the back. So if you, if you need to have some, uh, some uh, notes in there, then you can put them in. If you've got some receipts, then you can keep those in there. This, this back section for me, this is, this is the bit that I was kind of torn about because the main thing for me for minimalist or you know, slimline wallets is the fact that it forces you to think about what you're keeping in your wallet. And that is that if you have one of these style wallets, you know, you put your cards in and it, it stops you from having hundreds of extra cards and receipts from last Christmas that you just don't need, which you kind of, get with this it's it's a, it's a strange one because I've wanted to put receipts in the back here and 
I've kind of trained my brain to go, no, receipt's bad, throw receipts away because of these style wallets. Whereas with this one, it does make it easy to put in there. But then that also got me thinking, and that is because you may have a situation where, you know, you're used to an old fashioned traditional billfold style wallet. You've been looking into minimalist wallets, but you don't know, you want that safety blanket because you're always used to carrying X, Y, and Z that's in there. So this then falls perfectly into that kind of crossover zone for people wanting to dip their toe into the warm oceans of minimalist carry. Um, that sounded really cheesy. Should I edit that out? No, I'll keep it in. Um, but you still want to keep some of those things from a traditional wallet that, you know, you're used to. So you get this on the back and you can put notes in there. Now I found an old fashioned 20 pound note. These things were huge. Uh, and as you can see, it still fits in and it fits in perfectly. There's no overlap at the top uh, and you can, you can get into that as a, a, a new style 20 pound note. One of the other things that I think is not, not necessarily an elephant in the room, but it's definitely something to point out is, and that is, that the width. So let's just compare this against a few other wallets. So if you, if I just move this, oh, I knew I'd get that the wrong way. If I pull this back out, here's some things that we've looked at recently. So there is the Armour wallet, there's the Stealth wallet, here is the Elephant wallet, which is a, a wallet that we've looked at in the past. And hopefully, as you can see, you know, all of these wallets have a similar footprint from above. And that is that you know they they're all roughly the size of a credit or debit card. So when these are empty from above, they all look the same. But when these are empty as they are now, you can see that these, when you take things out, they get smaller. Whereas with this one, when you take things out, it doesn't get any smaller. So at the moment, there is nothing in there whatsoever. No cards. Um, although you've got the notes there, it doesn't get anything out. So if you're on a night out and you want to reduce the size of these, you can take cards out and it gets thinner. So at the moment, this stands in at 20 millimeters, which is roughly two of these. And at first, when I got it out, that was one of the things that I kind of got hung up on, is the fact that this is wider than these. But, if I was to put, see if, how quickly I can do this, if I was to put eight cards into the armor wallet here, I'll just do this off camera so I don't look like I'm trying to force these, well I am trying to force them, I'm trying to get them as quickly as possible, but hopefully you can see with eight cards in here now, it is roughly the same dimension. This is 20 millimeters and that is 15 millimeters. So it is a little bit still wider. And the main body of what makes this still wider is this billfold section here on the side, because like for like, this dimension and that dimension are roughly the same. That's, that's, the, that's one of the other main things to point out, out really here is that, yeah, it, it still manages to keep those minimalist credentials intact because as I mentioned the footprint is the same as these it's just that when compared to these with nothing in them dry um, it, it is just a little bit taller now I've been carrying this in my back pocket um, and I've not really had any difficulties and I think that is due to to, to this part on the top um, it adds a, adds, adds a little bit of cushion to it so when it's in your back pocket it, it just doesn't feel as though it's there. But also, I suppose, we might as well make some other kind of comparisons. So here we have um, the Ninja Wallet from A-Slim. I tend to go back to this wallet so much. It is such an amazing wallet. Shout out to A-Slim. They're one of the first uh, wallet reviews that I did. They are manufactured here in the UK. Um, not to get away from this one, they're great. Um, and this is good too. Yeah, I'm digging a hole for myself there on that one. Uh, and then we've also got the Molecule wallet from Pioneer. So you'll see these footprint wise, although these are still minimalist style wallets, they are slightly bigger um, from down here. Whereas from the side, you'll be able to see that they are quite a lot thinner as well. 
And would you believe it, I turn the camera around and there's a Zoom call happening just in the studio right next to me. So, you know, the trials and tribulations of working in a business studio. But let's get back to the wallet itself. Now, this wallet generally did surprise me. As I've mentioned, you know, I looked at this and I thought, it's too fat. But having it in the pocket, it's not. It's, it's a lot like some of those other square style minimalist wallets like the, the two arm wallets that we looked at as well and, and even the elephant wallet. Once it's in the back pocket for me and with a huge caveat that this really isn't a back pocket wallet, this is a front pocket wallet. But if you are a front pocket wallet person then this will definitely disappear into that pocket. If you're a back pocket carry type person then again it you know it's in there it slips in and it, it just it moves itself to a position that just feels comfortable if you're driving if you're in the office when you're walking around you have no issues whatsoever it's, it's, it's just there if you're within a professional environment you need to slip it into a jacket a lot of these style jackets now have uh, internal card um, pockets it fits perfectly into that purely because of that minimalist style footprint it, it just keeps within the bounds of this is what a credit card size or a debit card side is and keeps that small footprint so I'm, I'm generally impressed with this I think it's a great wallet um, and you should definitely look to Slim Puro to see what this is about even more so and what they have in store for the future as well um, I do want to take this point to say a massive shout out to Slim Puro for sending this to me and at least for getting in touch. Um, you know, I, I make content and I send so many emails asking to see if I can review or to see if we can have collaborations with different companies uh, and to be contacted by somebody to ask if I'd like to uh, give my thoughts on one of their wallets or one of their products is a you know, it's a massive thing for me and uh, I hope that this video uh, shows just exactly how, you know, how useful this wallet is. Um, full disclosure, so I've not been paid for this. It turns out that I generally do like this wallet. Um, there has been no cash exchanged for me to um, review this favorably, other than the fact that I get to keep the wallet, which is, which is really good. So there's some links in the description below so that you can check out Slim Puro. Uh, there's also some of my links in the bottom as well. So if you want to follow me on social media, look out for me on Instagram at Morlander underscore EDC. I tend to be on Instagram a lot more than I am on Facebook. I just find it easy to use and it's, it's just more fun. Uh, but if you want to find me on Facebook, uh, it's Morlander EDC. Um, and obviously here on YouTube, I'm here as well. Um, if you liked this content, hit the like button. If you'd like to subscribe, hit that subscribe button. I know from my figures that roughly about 10% of the people that watch this are subscribed, the other 90%, shame on you. No, so if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be awesome. And if you could share my content, that'd be even greater. It helps with my Google recommendations if my videos are shared. In fact, everybody share this video now. You owe it to me. It's, it's a nice weekend. You've all had a great Thanksgiving. Share, share. Anyway, um, thank you. I shall see you all soon. Oh, do you know what? This is the last week that I'm gonna be doing two videos a week. Next week, I'll be back in the studio full time, so we'll just be back to the normal one video per week. But for now, stay safe, stay more under, and stay EDC.